I had all these ideas and I just wanted to share them with all of you because I was like, this is gonna be the best fall pizza night ever. If you've never cooked with butternut squash, don't be intimidated. Here's how to roast and enjoy one of my favorite fall vegetables. Look at these huge butternut squashes. Look how huge this is. I thought they'd be like small grocery store ones. Acorn squash. Problem number two, these are gonna be so heavy. Even though you can find these year round, they're especially delicious in autumn recipes. You'll need to remove both ends. I like this technique. Instead of slicing through, just gently rock back and forth. And especially with hearty vegetables like this, make sure you have a sharp knife. That rocking motion really does all the work for you. Butter! And then straight down the center. Kind of pumpkin-y, even though it's not a pumpkin. And just like that jack-o'-lantern, just scoop out those seeds. These can be roasted and enjoyed just like pumpkin seeds. I wish they had pumpkins, but they full on have the pumpkin seeds. That's a lot of pumpkin seeds. I carved like 10 pumpkins this year. I'm exaggerating, it wasn't 10. I carved a bunch of pumpkins, so I have a bunch of pumpkin seeds. I like roasting whole, and I can simply remove the peel after it's done. Brush on a little olive oil. This is where you can flavor your squash with salt and pepper, your favorite seasonings, or sweeten things up with a little brown sugar. This oven's preheated to 400 degrees. You're looking at a bake time of about 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour if that one's pretty big. Butternut squash is awesome. When it's whole, it can last over six weeks just in your pantry. Since this one was so big that I picked up at the farmer's market, I'm gonna freeze half. Peel. The outside looks like a sweet potato, the inside looks like a pumpkin. What are you? Next, slice and dice. You're looking for uniform pieces. Just putting our raw butternut squash in here, you wanna keep it uncooked for the freezer. This is seriously so much. I could have broken this up into two portions, but right in the freezer and it'll last for six months. Who's doing something weird with butternut squash? I was just thinking I have extra butternut squash left over from creating the butternut squash video. And I wanted to do like a curry butternut squash, but all these look so good. It's the color really, like that deep orange color. That's what I love so much about butternut squash. Oh, it's Reed Drummond. Okay, butternut squash pancetta pasta. Everybody go out there and make that that recipe after you watch my video about how to cut open and prepare your butternut squash. Oh, this is the other thing I was gonna make, a chili with butternut squash. Maybe I'll just make that recipe, just add some butternut squash to it. Smaller butternut squash can take as little as 30 minutes. If a knife easily goes through, it's ready. Perfect. Let that squash cool slightly and you should be able to just peel away the skin. Oh, and it smells so good. I like to roast it with the peel to keep a lot of that moisture in. Let's surgically remove this. It's still a little warm. Oh, look at that. The options are really endless. Soup, side dishes. I've made butternut squash risotto before. It's so good. And I like roasting it because it really concentrates that flavor. It's so delicious. Oh, ooh. Okay, I'm gonna get crazy just for a minute. I'm being a little extra right now, and I'm gonna make a little sage brown butter to go over the top. Fancinary culinary stuff. And all of a sudden, we're on a cooking competition. I was like, how can I level up this butternut squash? Hold an audible in that brown butter and sage. This is delicious. Mm. I had to come up with like 30 more recipes of what to do with this. So they have huge butternut squash, but the tiniest little sweet potatoes. These are so small. Is there such thing as a fingerling sweet potato? That's what this looks like. They're all just so little. Ooh, these purple potatoes look really cool too. I guess it's hearty root vegetable season. These yellow squash look nice too. So I thought I knew my fruits and vegetables. I did not know what this is, but this is jicama. I did not know that this is what it looks like. Cause when you have jicama, it kind of tastes like a less sweet apple, but I did not know it looks like this. Time is ticking. I've got a bunch more to check out, but I've got to put this in the car cause there's no way I'm carrying this like 50 pound sack around. Pumpkins are not just decorations for front porches. They're delicious fall food. Here's how to make your own fresh pumpkin puree. First, you gotta choose the right pumpkin. Small ones like a sweet pie pumpkin or cheese variety of pumpkin like this Magdalena. I got a recommendation to get the Magdalena. I'm gonna scoop up two just so I can test out one and then have a backup one just in case. First, we're gonna open this up and remove the seeds. The style of pumpkin, the seeds and the membrane comes out so easy. Breaking this down into smaller wedges. I like to roast this plain, no oil, no seasoning for the most versatile puree. For our pumpkin, we'll need to preheat to 350. This should take 30 to 45 minutes. You're looking for soft, tender pumpkin. Boom, roasted. That skin is wrinkly and these are perfectly tender. And since it's so soft, I just use a butter knife to get that skin off of there. This is mildly therapeutic. You can use your hands, it's just a bit more messy. The simple part, turn this into pumpkin puree. A food processor or blender is gonna work best here. 
Oh, now that's a smooth puree. No pumpkin left behind. If you don't have a food processor, no worries. The pumpkin is soft enough for a hand mixer to do the job. Or go ultra manual with a masher. Making your own pumpkin puree could be a great value and it's super easy. This is perfect in so many baked goods. I love to make pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. And it's perfect for savory dishes like soups, chilies, and even pasta sauce. I'm a fan of smashing pumpkins. They're great for decorating, but they're also so good to eat. I was just driving down the street and had to pull over to this place. It's a gorgeous nursery. They're all decorated for fall and I just needed to explore this beautiful place. But I thought since I'm here, maybe they have some herbs that I can pick up. So I'll be looking for some herbs. But then I saw these chili pods. I think you can use these. These aren't just for decoration, right? Those are carrots, but I think this is dill. Oh no, this is asparagus. The leaves look a lot like dill. Maybe they have some rosemary and some sage here. Or these green onions. This place is huge and beautiful. Look, they have a whole forest of tropical plants in there. I feel like I'm getting closer. When it comes to pumpkin treats, recipes rarely use the full can. Here's what to do with leftover pumpkin. I love a good pumpkin bar and pumpkin French toast, but don't let that extra go to waste. Oh, canned pumpkin jello. What is this magic? Classic baking ingredients. But the jello and the pumpkin bread? That sounds awesome. Great thing to do with your leftover pumpkin. If you've got some leftover canned pumpkin, make this jello y pumpkin bread. It does look good. I like the cinnamon sugar on top, kind of like a churro pumpkin bread. So spongy. Mmm. Portion leftover puree in an ice cube tray. I like to measure so that each portion is about two tablespoons. If you think you don't like pumpkin because of one bad pumpkin pie, try some other recipes. Pumpkin is so great. Cover and this will last in your freezer for up to six months. Ice cube trays are perfect because you can pull out just the portion you need. Some canned purees and my homemade puree are a little watery, so you're gonna wanna remove excess moisture. I just use a strainer and some paper towels. You can even use cheesecloth. Get that in there. Just let this chill over a bowl, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. I blot the pumpkin like this for just about any baking recipe to get rid of that extra liquid. There it goes, there it goes. Oh yeah, so much better. Not soupy, nice and firm. Yo, here's another pumpkin bread <gasps> with a banana. I love banana and desserts. Oh, banana desserts are the best. And pumpkin bread. Ooh, here's another pumpkin recipe. See, figuring out what to do with your leftover canned pumpkin is just as easy as scrolling through Instagram. For larger portions, you can even use a muffin tin. These aren't pumpkin muffins yet, they will be. Same thing here, freeze these for later. If you're using a freezer bag, just do it in one thin layer. Pumpkin in the freezer will last for six months. Be sure to label and date it. Lay flat to save space. So when you get the itch for pumpkin spice, you'll have some puree in the freezer. I think pumpkin bread, that's what I'll do. Look at this oasis. I didn't know there was this much green in all the galaxy. Ooh, this is a beautiful plant. I was trying to grow a plant like this and I accidentally did not take care of it very well and it died. But this one's big and beautiful. I should just buy that one. So in all of our vlogs, I tend to stop to various different nurseries and plant stores. Usually have like one or two snake plants. This place has a whole wall of snake plants, like a hundred of them. This is incredible. And they're all so beautiful. Okay, back to the herb business. I'm looking for herbs. Homemade pizza night is a crowd pleaser, but those traditional toppings can get a little boring. Here's how to add fall flavors to homemade pizza. Cast iron skillet, one of my favorite pizza devices. Homemade pizza dough is great. When you're short on energy and time, just pick up some store-bought. I love making homemade pizza dough, but you can get the dough from your favorite pizza restaurant to just bake at home. So when you wanna save some time, get your favorite pizza dough and cook it up. All I had to do is exchange a little dough to get some dough. For a fall touch, I like roasted acorn squash. Going for super thin slices here because they're gonna go on top of our pizza. Acorn squash is so hard to cut. So peppery. Ooh, this comes out fast and furious. Vin Diesel, hold on. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Getting everything coated, but I don't want to break these apart. So I'm just doing it really gently and get everything in a single layer. Boom, roasted. It's beautiful on the pizza and it's so good. You can even eat the skin. Butternut squash plays so well on pizza too. Some roasted potato, if you've never had that on your pizza, it's amazing. Choose cheeses with a nutty flavor like pecorino or gruyere. And yeah, you could do spinach, but why not try Brussels sprout leaves? Basil's traditional, but sage and rosemary are a great twist. So I'm looking for herbs. I see some mint here, but this is stevia, plant that you get the uh, sugar from or like the sugar alternative. You can grow your own. I'm looking for sage. I've never seen sage like this before with the 
two-tone leaves and this sage. Really pretty. This is sage golden. I think I'm gonna get one of these sage. This oregano is beautiful too. So they had Italian oregano, Greek oregano. This is hot and spicy. I might have to pick that up. Oh, that smells so piney, so fresh. And this variety is called Huntington Carpet. <laughs> I'm gonna pick it up. What a lucky stop. I was not expecting to stop here, but this place is amazing. I definitely have to come back and got all the herbs I wanted. Little olive oil in the bottom. You want the oil spread around and you wanna get that dough right up to the edges. A pan pizza like this will give you a crispy crust on the bottom and fluffy dough in the middle. Dimple it, cause that's what the pizza professionals do. You're the boss here, so sauce it and top it however you like. A skillet pizza, all those toppings can go right to the edge. That's some of the Gruyere cheese. There's really no rules and not much of a plan here, but acorn squash is definitely going on here. Beautiful shingles of this acorn squash. One of the rules of homemade pizza, many of the ingredients you'll want to pre-cook, like the sausage, the acorn squash, or the potatoes. This is a little bit of Italian sausage. Gonna top this with a little bit more mozzarella and some Parmesan. Like when you're at the restaurants and they're like, how much Parmesan would you want? And they say, say when, and you go, I was looking for inspiration for my fall pizza. I was like, do you have any specialty pizzas like for the fall? Any fall flavors? I did find a restaurant. It's a popular pizza chain. They do have a fall flavored pizza. Well, they have a fall themed pizza, a pumpkin pizza, if you will. And I wanted to check it out. The famous jack-o'-lantern pizza from Papa John's. Olive eyes, those are great. My fall flavored pizza, after all my attempts for artisan fancy pizza with fall flavors, I ended up with this. Well, it's been done. Thank you, John. The key to this skillet pizza, you want that oven screaming hot. 500 degrees, or if your oven goes up to 550, we're gonna go there. Woo, I can feel the fire. Trap that heat in. Check on the pizza after 10 minutes. It should take 15 to 20 minutes total. Really think what's fresh and in season and play around with the flavors. Ooh, I feel like a real artist when I do this. My dream of being on the chef's table. If they don't invite you to the chef's table, you make your own table, okay? That's what Tyler Perry said. If they don't invite you to their table, make your own. Some fresh mozz straight from the pizza place. Let me do potato on this one. Why? Because I can. Oh, it looks so beautiful. I love these purple potatoes. These are amazing. One final little drizzle. Stanley Tucci style. Look at this, this looks amazing. Now it just needs a little more cheese and why not some fresh sage? Oh, that looks amazing. Hot honey has been all the craze when it comes to pizza, so I wanted to switch it up and do hot maple. Some maple syrup. I'm steeping some maple syrup and chili pods on low heat on the stove. You can infuse the heat from chili flakes or even fresh chilies like jalapenos. So I did ask, these are New Mexican chili pods, dried there, they just brought them here, and they said they're really, really spicy, but you can't eat them. Little chili infused maple. I'm just going crazy today. Just a drizzle of that, it'll be sweet. Spicy, savory, salty. I literally can't wait to dig in. I have no clue what this will taste like. And nice and crispy on the bottom like a pan pizza should be. The trick with the pan pizza, I like to cut it with scissors. No pizza roller here, not necessary. It's still a little hot, so watch your fingers. Fresh out the oven. All right, everyone knows the rules. It's amazing! That hot maple is what makes this pizza. That sweet Italian sausage. I love the acorn squash, so good. Great texture. That hot maple syrup, put that on your pizza. That skillet, game changer. Pizza stone, I've used that before. This is just so self-contained. It radiates the heat a lot better, the cast iron does. Crispy crust on the bottom, delicious. And I love that the crispy cheese gets so dark and caramelized on the edges. So good. I haven't done this in a long time and it's one of my favorite things is just going through some of the comments. Okay, I read the comments on my own, but on camera, I think it's kind of funnier to do it on camera. Back in my chef coat days. And apparently I've done a bunch of pizza videos and more pizza videos to come. Where does everyone get those tomato paste things in a tube? Tomato paste in a tube should be at your regular grocery store, but it's in a box. That's what's deceiving. It comes in a box and the tube is inside the box. Maybe on the top shelf usually I think is where I've may maybe have seen it. Oh, can't wait to see you with your own cooking show. I do have my own cooking show. This is it. That's what's so great. <laughs> I love this one. As an Italian, I can kindly accept that. Good job. Okay. Italian approved. So you can make any pizza recipe I make because I have somebody 
completely validating me from Italy. I don't have a mixer, can I need the dough? Yes, you can make pizza dough from hand. A mixer makes it easier, but you can definitely do it from hand. I've made dough a bunch just by hand. How do you think they made pizza dough before technology? Yeah, they mix everything by hand. I got one check mark from an Italian and then one, one X from an Italian. As an Italian, this video is just no. Let's see what the replies one. No one cares. As an Italian, there's nothing more traditional than a square pan pizza. Thank you. There's always people out there defending the work that we're doing. I like this one. Square pizza feels like a send to me, but hey, anything goes and my tummy makes life better. People think that a shape is the food. It is not. A square cake tastes the same as a round cake. If it tastes good and you enjoy it, what does it matter? I think number two was done too. You can never have enough cheese. And I'm just gonna do a little parsley, why not? I feel like every pizza needs a little green on top. I'm gonna leave the hot honey off of this one so I can taste it first. Use a tiny plate, makes the slice look bigger. Mm. Fresh, so flavorful, so delicious. Those tomatoes, I got the colorful, like heirloom fancy ones. Game changer, they're amazing. You don't even need sauce, those tomatoes have so much flavor. All right, they look like pepperoni, but they're actually potatoes on top of this and they're so good. I love pizza night because everybody can customize their own.